let's now talk about the refrigerant lines. There's uh, two long lines for a residential air conditioning system, okay? And we'll talk about the automotive application in a minute. But the two lines are for refrigerant to flow back and forth from inside and outside of the house. So it's continual flow in one line and continual flow in the return line. Now, once it gets up to this A coil, here's a blow up of an A coil, it'll come in to the smaller diameter line. It'll return out of the larger diameter line. What is being supplied to this A coil? What is it in that line coming in? Liquid. Liquid, right? So what's coming out going back toward the compressor? Vapor. Vapor. That's right, vapor. So the liquid requires smaller cross-sectional area for the same mass flow rate and the, than the vapor. The vapor is, has, has a larger specific volume or lower density, and it requires a larger cross-sectional area, hence you give it a larger diameter. Now, if you can trace this right here, it goes over and it goes into this right here. I'm going to change color right here. This is a restriction. That's our expansion valve. Now, it's got a control to it and it's a TXV thermostatic expansion valve. It's got a little bulb of a temperature sensor that goes over here and measures the temperature or senses the temperature on the suction line. And then it says, oh, I'm coming out too warm. Give it more refrigerant. I'm coming out too cold, low, less refrigerant goes in, okay? So it is some control mechanism. It's not electronic. It's just uh, uh, mechanical. They're old. They've been around for a long time. They're switching a lot of this stuff to digital, electronically controlled metering to that uh, A-coil. But once it goes, now it at, drops the pressure right across here, and now you have a distributor. So it's got one, two three, four lines, and they snake over, and they start feeding sections of the coil, and it goes back, do a loop, back, do a loop, back, do a loop. So you can see these, these, these uh, 180 degree elbows that redirect the flow back and forth in a serpentine path through the, the coil. And it's all finned on this side to promote heat transfer. It's sealed right in here, so airflow can't go there. It's forced to come and do a Z-shape across the coil and come up. Can't, it's sealed up here, so the airflow can't... It, the air has to go through the coil. Um, now, once they, they have two feeds on this side, they come up here, you can see one, two coming out. True? Two coming out. And on, on the other side, there's two coming out. And they collect in a larger suction line manifold. There's a little Z to it. It goes back, and then it comes out this way. There. So there you go. There's the flow of refrigerant through that evaporator. It's called a coil because of its shape, and they're very common. Okay. The tray, you can see, collects the water, and there's little hookups to get the drain the length of this line between the expansion valve and the evaporator coil is very short. Likewise, back here is the compressor. The suction line goes to the compressor. Then it discharges from the compressor and starts to go into these coil, condenser coils. It then comes out of the condenser coil, goes through a filter dryer, and the liquid line back up to the into the house. So the length of the line it connecting the compressor and the outdoor or condenser condensing coil is very short. There's two long lines. See that? And two very short lines. So here's an illustration. Compressor, condenser, expansion valve, evaporator. These are the lines, like this line or this line, this line, connecting the components in that line. Four lines. Two of them are relatively long in a residential air conditioning application, and two are relatively short. True? So 
how about the one going from the evaporator to the compressor? Is that long or is that short? This, this one going from the evaporator to the compressor. Long or short? Long. How about from the compressor to the condenser? Short. How about from the condenser to the expansion valve? Long or short? From the condenser to the expansion valve? Long. And then from the expansion valve to the evaporator? Short. And so this, uh, they have names for the long lines. One is called the suction line. One is called the liquid line. Okay, and so uh, looking at this one, the one connecting the evaporator to the compressor, it's long. Is it called the suction line or the liquid line? It's the suction line. All right, and over here, this other long one connecting the condenser to the expansion valve, that's the long liquid line, isn't it? Liquid line. Now, the names make sense. I mean, liquid's flowing in the liquid line. Why don't they say the vapor line? Well, because the vapor is being sucked or drawn by the compressor out of that evaporator. If you turn the system off, let it all come to equilibrium, the pressure is pretty well the same everywhere. When you turn it on, it'll start pushing up the pressure on the outlet of the compressor and drawing down the pressure into the compressor, and hence it's the compressor sucking the refrigerant out of the evaporator. So that's why they call it the suction line. Now, I can see this, these two lines right here. Okay, where is the uh, suction line in this automotive application? Where is it at? It's basically from the evaporator. I know there's a little metering device all the way to the compressor. Isn't that the suction line? And then where is my liquid line in the automotive application? It's, it's right here coming out of the condenser. I know it goes through a filter dryer, but it goes all the way up. And this metering device is really close to the, the coil, so it's basically right there. That metering device is just like in the other one. Because as soon as you come across that metering device, it's cold. You want to get it into the evaporator. So that's the liquid line. Now notice that this line right here, you can often find that easily underneath your hood because it's got to come out of that compressor and go and find it and connect it up to the uh, coil, the condenser in front of the radiator. And often it's long and it has to be able to handle the vibrations and other, other things. Okay. Now, one of these lines the suction line or liquid line is hot. And if you grab it, either under the hood of the car when the engine's been running and the air conditioner's been running for a while, you won't grab it for very long. It'll let go. And the other one will be relatively cool. You can touch it, and it'll be cool. And actually, when it's running, if anybody's seen it, what will happen to that line? It'll be sweating. What do you mean sweating? It'll be so cool that it'll be below the dew point of the humid air around the engine and it'll be drops all over it and it'll be dripping. Okay? That's that's how cool it is. So which line is hot? Is it the suction line? Is that the one that's hot? Or is it the liquid line hot? The liquid line, we have a vote that the liquid line is hot. People agree? And the suction line is cool. And in the automotive application, you could probably put your hand on this one. That would be a discharge line. Discharging from the compressor, going toward the uh, condensing coil, condenser, and that'll be really hot. Right? You touch that, you're going to burn. Okay? Now, which one is insulated? Which of these lines are insulated? The suction line insulated or the liquid line insulated? The suction line is insulated. So why is the suction line insulated? Because as it goes through the 
if it, it's cool enough that it would absorb some heat from the surroundings, but it's not going to help performance. And actually, if you bring in the cool refrigerant into the compressor, it keeps, keeps the compressor from getting so hot. So it's better to feed it saturated vapor that's not superheated vapor, relatively cool saturated vapor. It's good for the compressor to feed it saturated vapor, not liquid. Don't feed the compressor liquid. It'll break. But you don't want it to be superheated vapor. You, it, it actually provides cooling to that compressor. Think about the temperature change coming in versus going out. That refrigerant really does boost the temperature. It goes way up. I'm sorry? Yep, all that work of compression just boosts that pressure and the temperature. It goes way up. And, uh, and, and without any heat transfer, it's all just compression, compression. And then, so here, you can't really see this discharge line. It's so close from the compressor to that condenser coil. But you have two lines, the thinner liquid line and the larger diameter suction line. And one will have typically a big black foam insulation wrapped around it. One will be bare, right? The suction line will have that big foam insulation around it. And if you have cats and animals, they'll come around there and claw it and rip it off. True? Or it'll degrade if it's in the sun. And so you should try to keep that line insulated. Um, and if you take that insulation, peel it back, and touch that line, it'll be cold and often wet to the touch because of the condensate. And then the bare line is the liquid line, and a lot of times you touch it and you'll burn your finger. It, it'll still be so warm. Okay? So it's uninsulated. <clears throat>